The first step in a risk assessment is to gain sufficient information on what might cause the risk to human health or environment. We have to know which radionclides are present in the contaminated areas and their quantities. Radiochemists can determine which radionclides are present in different matrices. This is called qualitative analysis. Matrices in which radionclides are incorporated can be very complex, such as in spent nuclear fuel, uranium mill tailings, phosphogypsum waste from the phosphate industry, scales and slurries with elevated natural radionclides content from oil and gas industries, or soil, sediments, water and biological materials contaminated during accidental release of radionclides. Different radionclides can be present in these matrices, but what is common to them is that they are either alpha, beta and or gamma emitters. This governs the method of their qualitative determination. Gamma spectrometry is a powerful, non-destructive technique which can determine numerous gamma emitters simultaneously without the need to separate them chemically. Examples include cesium-137, potassium-40, barium-133, uranium-238, radium-226, lead-210 and americium-241. But if radionclides do not emit gamma rays, the probability of emitting them is too low or they emit gamma rays with a similar energy to interfering radionclides, then radiochemical separation needs to be performed before qualitative determination. This is also the case for alpha and beta emitters such as polonium-210 and strontium-90. Once we know which radionclides are in our samples, we need to quantify them. This is called quantitative analysis and entails determining the concentration of the radionclide in the sample. Both qualitative and quantitative determinations are usually carried out simultaneously and an understanding of radiochemistry is required to separate interfering radionclides before measurements of alpha and beta emitters can take place. When we know which radionclides are present in contaminated areas and their quantity, the next step is to assess how mobile or how fast they travel in environmental compartments. It is important to know when in the future we can expect that they will reach groundwater sources, agricultural areas or human living environments. Radionclides can be present as different chemical species, a typical example being uranium, which is more mobile in oxidized form of 6+, and less mobile in reduced form of 4 plus. Determining the chemical species of a radionclide is called speciation analysis. Knowing the chemical speciation in specific environmental conditions is crucial in assessing the risk of radionclides. The methods used in speciation analysis can be thermodynamic and kinetic calculations using different models, direct analysis of environmental samples and model experiments. In this context, Porbo diagrams could be very useful. They map out possible stable phases of an aqueous electrochemical system. Porbo diagrams are also known as EH-PH diagrams. Consider the uranium Porbo diagram. The vertical axis is labeled EH for the voltage potential with respect to the standard hydrogen electrode, while the horizontal axis is labeled PH for the log function of the H plus ion activity. The solid lines of Purbo diagram show the equilibrium conditions where the activities of species from both sides are equal. On the either side of the line, one form of the species is predominant. Dashed lines show the stability limits of water, where below or above them water is not stable and will be reduced to hydrogen under highly reducing conditions and oxygen under highly oxidizing conditions. Fractionation analysis is often considered as a first rough estimation in assessing radionclide speciation. Here, the sample is subjected to, to several extraction solutions to assess how much of radionclide is present in operationally defined fractions, such as exchangeable, bound organic matter, carbonates, 
iron manganese oxides and residual fraction. Several physical chemical processes can govern what will happen with trinucleides in contaminated areas such as dissolution and or leaching from solid materials, adsorption on minerals and particles, precipitation from aqueous solutions and diffusion through different barriers. Radiochemists study these processes to be able to predict what will happen with radionclides in specific environmental conditions. Once radionclides enter an agricultural area, they can be taken up by crops. This can then be transferred to humans by direct ingestion of the crops or via intermediate animals through meat or dairy products. Different crops take up different proportions of radionclides from soil and this is characterized by the soil to plant transfer factors where activity concentration of radionclides in plants is divided by activity concentration in soil. It is not only dependent on crops, but also on soil types and in which chemical forms the radionclides are present in the soil. Transfer factors are also different from different plant parts. They are usually highest in the roots. Transfer of radionclides from crops to cows and to cows milk is assessed with concentration ratios where the activity concentration in milk is divided by the activity concentration in the feed. Adequate risk assessments would be impossible without the contribution of radiochemists providing input data on processes and radionclides of concern to the specialists conducting the risk assessments.